Pickle, let's go to the hotline. And let's bring in the head coach of the El Paso Montwood Rams. We are joined by Coach Ariel Femaligi. Coach, how are you? What'd you do, Pickle? Coach, you? Coach, you read me. Yes, I'm here. Hey, what's up, Coach? How are you? I'm doing all right. Great. How are you? Uh, I'm excellent. How are things in beautiful El Paso, Texas? Oh, beautiful weather. Nice and warm, ready for uh, football kickoff. So y you mentioned that ready for football kickoff. And, and I know that there were a lot of coaches around the state who were wondering and questioning and worried about whether or not we were going to have football at all this season. And El Paso kind of even more than most, you know, a place that's been pretty hard hit by, by the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, right. Now that it is here. Uh, what is the vibe around the field house? What is the vibe around the team now that you finally made it to game day being tomorrow? You know, it, it's it's funny because, um, you know, normally preseason right, right around the time before the first game where we're looking at preseason rankings, we're looking at what people have slated, you know, who, who, uh, who are the, the teams to keep an eye on that kind of stuff. And, and really, uh, this year is kind of different because uh, we, we really don't care about any of that. You know, our guys are just excited to go out there and play. Um, and so, you know, it's just a feeling of overwhelming excitement. Um, a little bit of of, of kind of a, a disbelief, like, uh, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll believe it when we kick off type of thing. <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah, we're, we're just we're just looking forward to getting on the field and and, and excited to to kick off what, what what we hope to be you know a complete eight game season and so uh yeah we're just we're just we're just happy to be on the field Greg. you know you, you the truth. one of the things that i think is 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 so challenging for coaches this year is is keeping your 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 kids focused keeping your guys focused when it's such a moving target down down the road you know i think it's easy whenever you say hey guys we're kicking off on august 29th like you know the normal off season right. let's, let's go through the paces um but how how have you worked towards keeping your guys focused when there has been so many unknowns uh, for the future? Well, it started in March you know, when the when the shutdown happened. You know, we we, we talked to our kids from the very beginning um, when that happened. You know, we feel like we were the first team to get going with virtual workouts. Um, the first opportunity that we had um, that UIL let us do it, and that our our uh, our um, athletics department allowed us to start kind of meeting with our guys virtually. You know, we jumped on that opportunity right away. And so we've told our guys from the beginning that, that we're two steps ahead uh, of everyone else. And that's kind of been the driving force. You know, we, we've told them we're ahead, let's stay ahead. And so throughout all the, the postponements, throughout all the, the moving targets that have happened, you know, we, we've just told our kids that, hey, remember that we're ahead. Remember that we're step two, two steps ahead of our competition. And uh, and we don't want them. We don't want them to catch up. So that's kind of been the motivating factor, the motivating driving force in our kids is they wanted, you know, they they, they felt like we were ahead, and they wanted to stay ahead. So um, we've always operated with a, a certain level of, of of hope and belief that that the, that the season was going to happen. Uh, we didn't really allow ourselves to start thinking, what if it doesn't, and there's a chance that it won't, uh, because then that that would affect you know, our work ethic and the things that we were doing, because it's tough doing virtual workouts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's tough getting on there and 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 having the self-discipline to bring yourself to the computer every day and, and, and bust your butt and get yourself tired and worn out when you don't know, you know. So our kids, you know, we've always operated with the, with the understanding that, yeah, we're going to have a season. We don't know what it'll look like, when it'll happen, but we're going to have one and, and we're going to be two steps ahead when it happens. So that's kind of how we operated this entire time. We're talking with Ariel Femaligi, the head coach of the El Paso Montwood Rams here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation and hashtag TF Today. So, so then, Coach, you, you're now on the precipice of, of the season. You guys are kicking off tomorrow. Uh, but uh, do you have a feeling, you know, throughout the course of workouts, throughout the course of, of the offseason, um, you know, you guys were a playoff team last year, uh, returned 10 starters from last year's playoff squad. Um, do you have a feeling quite yet? On, on what this team is going to be about, where the, the 2020 Montwood Rams are, are, are going to hang their hat? Yeah, uh, we, we, we definitely have a feeling. We know what we have um, on our team. Mm -hmm. We know what we're bringing back. We feel like we have um, 
as good a, a receiving core as anyone that we'll ever that we'll see any opponents that we'll have. Um, we we really really like our receiving core. We think that they're um, they're all experienced. They all have um, great athletic ability. So we're going to have um, athletes spanning the width of the field, and we have a quarterback battle that you know under normal circumstances would have played itself out by now. But uh, without spring ball, without preseason and, and things like that um you know our our evaluation is going to continue into the first game and so we're going to go in with you know two quarterbacks they're going to they're going to split some time and they're going to battle and um you know we'll, we'll determine we'll, we'll see uh, see if that determines itself um in, in this first game but um you know whoever's in there a quarterback's going to have a wealth of weapons uh, at their disposal and so you know our eyes are, are on uh, you know, we came up short. We lost our the district championship game last year to Americas, and our focus has been on taking that next step this year uh, to becoming the district champions. And then, of course, you know, going off and making uh, making a run in the in the Texas State playoffs. And so, you know, um, we we feel like we're primed to do that, and we like where we're at. We like our team. We like uh, we have great chemistry. Our coaches have been doing an excellent job. So we like where we're at. We like our outlook for the twenty twenty season. Uh you you take a look at your schedule and you mention it's it's uh, it's a truncated schedule you guys have have eight games on the schedule and and what that means is that in district 16a that means you got a non district game this week and then next week next time you're on the field it counts next time you're on the field they're taking on franklin uh, in in a conference or in, in a district game does right. that does that change how you guys go about business at all, knowing full well that you're not going to have what what's normally about a three game lead up to district season, does that change your what what how you guys prepare, how you guys go about things? Well, it, it accelerates um, the the evaluation process for sure. Um, usually, you'll have three games to to kind of you know give guys uh, some playing time and, and you know get your depth guys in there and, and, and evaluate that and see where you're. See if you have any guys that can potentially move into the starting lineup, you know. So, you know, basically you know, everything's just going to be shortened as far as that's concerned. And, um, you know, we're going to have to figure things out pretty quickly in the course of uh, one game, you know, because then we have, like you say, we have a district the following week, the district opener the following week. So, you know, the evaluation system, the evaluation process is going to take a hit. But, um, you know, we hope to get all, all of our kids in there and, um, and, and get some kind of a, an evaluation done on them so that we know what we have going forward in, in some of the, some of the areas that we have question marks. Uh, and, and coach, you know, uh, speaking of, of the season opener, it's tomorrow night, seven o'clock mountain time out there at Mustang stadium. You guys are going to take on Burgess, uh, a, a squad that you guys haven't played since 2017. Uh, won the last two against them. Uh, I know that neither of you guys have any tape on one another. So, right. uh, so, you know, what, what, I don't want to ask you to give away your game plan, but when you take a look at what you're up against tomorrow night, what, what do you see? Oh, well, I see a team that uh, has some very talented football players, um, very, very good football players. You know, they, they've got, you know, uh, their running back, Tavares uh, Jones, has been getting SEC attention and offers from SEC schools and big-time schools. So, you know, uh, that's as good of a player as we could hope to play against them, and we embrace that. You know, we, we, we look at it as a challenge and an opportunity to to test ourselves against a very quality opponent. And, uh, and, and of course, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, they have, they have some – Excellent players as well. Alex Marenko's a, a big time linebacker for them. He, he doubles as a receiver for them also. Uh, fortunately for us, you know, not having the film and not having the familiarity as far as um, a, a district opponent or someone that we see every year. Um, you know, Coach Rutledge and I, um, Burgess head coach, we, we actually, you know, we go way back. We, we worked together at Del Valle for about seven years. And so, you know, Fortunately for us, uh, you know, if we, we, we kind of have that sense of familiarity. So um, we know what we're going to get with Burgess. Uh, when we played them uh, for two years back in 16 and, uh, 2016 and 2017, you know, they're a very disciplined football team. They're a team that, uh, that, that plays, um, you know, very much keeps everything in front of them defensively and doesn't give you anything easy. Uh, they limit your explosive plays. So we, we, we understand that. We know that. We know that we're going to have to be patient. Um, and, and so uh, we're coming into the game, understand, having a pretty good idea of what we're going to get from Burgess. Um, and so hopefully that helps us mentally prepare because they are going to take away our big plays. Um, you know, I, I know that about Coach Rutledge. And, and so the, the biggest uh, task for us is going to be patient and give them, letting us take what they give us. 
Uh, and finally, Coach, um, I want to I want to go back in time. I want to go back to the earlier part of this century, uh, which w- when you were, of course, uh, a star lineman for the UTEP Miners. Oh um, man, yeah. <laughs> you're talking ancient history. Uh, well, right. I'm, I'm, I've got I've got some I've got some data up here that uh, you know you're a four year starter there. You're part of that WAC state uh, that WAC conference championship in 2000. Um, it says here that, and this was written in 2002, it says that you could bench press 420. And so I guess my question now is we are, you know, we're 18 years removed from this. How cl- <laughs> right. I, I don't need a number, but how close are we to the 420 right now? <laughs> we are uh, not close, not very close <laughs> at all, Greg. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to try to keep up that. <laughs> That perception, not at all. No, I'd be, I'd be surprised if I could, if I could still rep two twenty five. Honestly, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be very surprised if I could do that. But um, you know, um, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. I try to get in there and stay, stay active with the kids. Um, but man, you know, these these kids are, um, wow. they're they're a lot more, um, they're a lot more athletic than we were in my day, at least <laughs> the way I remember it. And they're they're a lot stronger, man. These kids are putting up some some real numbers, and so, you know, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it if if my numbers are down, but the kids' numbers are up. I'll take that any day. See, but here's the thing, coaches. I'm looking at this photo for, of of you back in 2002, and and what I love, you know, everybody's got everybody wants like the thin pads. That was back in the day of the big shelf. You had the big shelf, and I gotta tell you, coach, pretty menacing. <laughs> Yeah, well, that was my goal. You know, that was, that was the intention. I was trying to. I couldn't do it with with my size. You know, I was an undersized lineman. I was, you know, six three, six foot three, uh, offensive tackle. You know, that that's that's uh, by today's standards, that that's minuscule. You know, and so I had to do something to, to intimidate the defense. You know, so I put the biggest pads I could find. Give me a big old neck roll and, and let's go. <laughs> he's, he's Ariel family. He's the head coach of the El Paso Montwood Rams. Make sure you catch their season opener tomorrow night against the Burgess against Burgess coach. Really appreciate your time. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys on the field and uh, best luck tomorrow. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate that. Uh, the opportunity at any time. Uh, go Rams. There he goes. Ariel family head coach. <laughs> El Paso Montwood.